All right, good morning, everybody. I'm going to start now. It's 10 o'clock. So, uh, reminder uh, just happened. If everybody could please mute their phones, that'll help me out a lot. Uh, if you have any questions, I can answer those. So, type them into the chat area or at the end. I'll also provide some time and uh, you can. We can answer them at the end of the presentation. All right, so today's topic is connecting uh, VFD to a Nexus system, and this is going to include uh, a Nexus control, which is defined as any one of the following, which is the PPC 4000 or NXF 4000 product. It can be the NX6100 or the PPC 6000 product. And these are fuel, all fuel air ratio control or parallel positioning systems. And those units control servos to meter the different channels of combustion. And each servo has feedback to ensure precise positioning and to create a lockout if any deviations are detected. So with that system, you can also use VFDs. And VFDs can be incorporated as channels of control with any Nexus system. And the way to do this is feedback must be provided to make the control closed loop. This allows the position of the VFD to be continuously monitored. So using a VFD as a channel of control is typically done with the combustion air blower to either provide more precise control to save on electrical usage or both. So you need some hardware to make this work. With the NXF 4000 or PPC 4000, uh, you have a VFD add-on card, and that is the NX CES VFD, and that's shown here in the image. And this must be added to the system in order to enable the use of a VFD. So in order to fit this card, you control the you power the control down, you remove the cover, and then the card is fitted to the top board of the control and there's a header provided, and that's shown in the image on the lower left. Then once the covers are placed, you apply power and the VFD can then be wired to the terminal block P14. The terminal block is actually on the uh, main board of the control, and then the VFD channels can be configured for use. So this card offers interfaces for up to two VFDs with either encoder feedback or with 4 to 20 milliamp feedback from the VFD. The analog outputs from any unused channels can also be used as user assignable analog outputs. So here are some images of that card once it's fitted. The image on the left shows before the card is fitted you can see the header of pins with no card inserted and then on the right with the card inserted. So for the NX6100 and PPC6000, uh, VFD is also enabled with an add-on card, and that is the NXDB VSD add-on card. So in order to use that add-on card, you would power down the control, remove the control from the back panel, take the rear cover off, and then you're going to fit the card into the header provided. And the terminal blocks on this control are part of the card and will be exposed for external connections. Once the rear cover is replaced, you'll put the control back, apply power, and then the VFD can be wired to the connections on that terminal block. The NXDB VSD offers interfaces for up to two VFDs as well, with either encoder feedback or with 4 to 20 milliamp feedback from the VFD. The analog inputs or outputs from any unused channels can be programmed uh, as programmable analog inputs or user assignable analog outputs. Using this card also enables Modbus RTU connection for BMS use as an additional feature. So here are some images of fitting that card. The first thing you do is remove the control, flip it over, you're going to remove the screws, take the cover off the back. Once the bottom is removed, bottom cover is removed, there is going to be a header on the board. You're going to fit the card into the header. The terminal block will uh, be exposed through the cutout, and then the terminal blocks will be uh, accessible. So in the system design, you have a minimum amount of servos. The NXF 4000 and PPC 4000 can have up to 10 servos connected with up to four in use at any, for any profile. And additionally, you can add one or two VFDs per profile. The minimum configuration supported on the 4000 is two servos, or you can have one servo if you have one VFD. Uh, with the 4000, it is not possible to configure the control to only use one or two VFDs if there are not any servos or to just use one servo alone without at least one VFD. The NX6100 and PPC6000 can have up to 10 servos connected and all 10 can be used with any profile. 
One or two VFDs may be added per, per profile, but that'll reduce the number of servos that can be used accordingly. So you still can only have 10 total channels of control. And with the 6100 and PPC 6000, the minimum configuration supported is one servo or one VFD. So there are some requirements for the VFD you choose. The type of drive you choose is important. It is recommended that a constant torque or a vector control drive is used. And this is due to the resolution provided in the control of the motor, which allows for a quicker response to a change in commands. That means that there is finer control available of the motor with the vector control. If a variable torque, which is also known as a volt hertz control or HVAC drive is used, there can be a lag in the response due to the coarser control, and that can be large enough to cause lockouts due to improper feedback. Uh, lengthening the acceleration or deceleration times may allow the response to match what is expected, but if you do this, this will result in noticeably diminished performance in the burner response to the process. FireEye has some VFD options available to you uh, in the form of the ABB ACS 550 drive. We offer for sale the ACS 550 drives from 5 horsepower to 200 horsepower in 230, 460, or 600 volt AC forms. The drives are packaged in NEMA 12 enclosures with fuse disconnects, motor overload relay, and an LCD keypad. A contactor bypass package with a handoff auto switch is also offered. These VFDs are programmed at the factory, so all the settings needed to work properly with the Nexus controls are pre-programmed. The only thing to do in the field is to properly wire between the devices. If the installation is a retrofit, it may be necessary to properly commission the VFD as well. Uh, this is assuming that if the uh, drive is provided to a burner manufacturer, they would um, already have installed the motor and everything to the VFD. So then you might have to enter the, the motor nameplate data and check the motor installation and all of the motor startup uh, procedures. If, a VF, if your VFD needs fall outside the scope described here, let us know and we may be able to get a quote for a different drive that can fit your application as well. So here we have a parameter list, and this is a listing of, of the parameters that are pre-configured by FireEye uh, for the ACS 550 installations. Normally, again, these will be pre-configured, but the list is provided so you can verify in the field if needed. So feedback is a safety requirement with any parallel positioning system. All the channels of control must be closed loop. Closed loop means that feedback is checked to ensure that the commanded signals are being carried out properly. With the servos, this is done internally by an encoder and is part of the secure transmission between the servo and the control. So both the commands and the feedback are carried out over the same bus connection to the servos. The VFD is treated the same as a servo and that feedback is required. Since the VFD is an external device, the connections between the Nexus control and the VFD are hardwired. This allows for a couple of different options to be used to supply the feedback. The first is 4 to 20 milliamp feedback from the VFD. The command signal to the VFD is an analog 4 to 20 milliamp signal. That's the signal that tells the VFD what to do. The feedback can be provided by the VFD as well, also using a 4 to 20 milliamp signal. The requirement for this to work is that the function of the 4 to 20 milliamp out output is properly assigned to indicate the running frequency of the VFD in the same scale as the commanded frequency, uh, which is typically going to be 50 or 60 hertz. Safety is provided with this method since the VFD is analyzing the electrical connection to the motor to determine if the motor is running as it should be, and the VFD would have an internal fault if the motor was not running properly based upon the voltage and frequency being supplied. If there were a situation where the motor was running but there was not any connection to the combustion air fan, the Nexus control would then lock out based upon the airflow interlock safety fault. The other option is to use encoder feedback. So if it is required for the installation, an external encoder can be mounted to the motor shaft to provide the feedback to the Nexus control. If this option is used, the 4 to 20 milliamp signal from the Nexus still goes to the VFD for the command, but the 4 to 20 milliamp output from the VFD is not connected, and instead the signal from the encoder is going to provide the feedback to the Nexus control. So if you're going to use an encoder, the encoder selected must have an open collector output type. The NXF4000 and PPC4000 controls have an internal pull-up resistor to work with this signal, while the NX6100 and PPC6000 
require either an encoder with a built-in pull-up resistor or an external pull-up resistor can be used as well. The NXF4000 uh, and PPC4000 supply 24 volt DC power and the 6100 and PPC6000 use 12 volts. The encoder can either be a single channel or a quadrature type. If the encoder is a quadrature type, it may have multiple outputs with many different uh, designations such as A, A0, B, B0, etc. But only one output, which is either A or B, is going to be connected to the Nexus control. So you can use the quadrature type, but you just don't connect all the extra channels. Note that the output from an open collector encoder should be limited to about 30 feet or less and should be protected from noise as much as possible. And you don't want to install it in the same conduit as high voltage wiring and you want to use shielded cable. So the way the encoder works is the encoder output counts pulses as the motor shaft rotates. It is important to select an encoder therefore with the correct number of counts per revolution. This can be determined using the following formula to determine the scale value to enter into the Nexus control. And that is the motor RPM times the counts per revolution uh, divided by the frequency, in this case 60. The NXF4000 and PPC4000 can have the encoder scale values set from 300 to 5000 and the NX6100 and PPC6000 can have encoder scale values set from 255 to 999. So these scale values applied to the formula will determine uh, what your usable counts per revolution can be, and those are shown in the table on this page. So if your motor is 1750 RPM, you can get any encoder for the 4000, 11 to 171 counts per revolution, and with the 6100 or 6000, it would be 9 to 34. So you base the encoder you choose on your motor RPM as well. So there are a couple different options for mounting and using encoders. First, the encoder can be ordered as an integrated part of the motor. If that is an option, you want to make sure the encoder type and counts per revolution is compatible with what is needed. If it is not, you can get a converter module to change the output type, which might be from line driver to open collector, for example, or to reduce the counts per revolution by dividing the pulses. It is very common for the integrated encoders to have 1,024 counts per revolution, so converter modules that divide the pulses by a factor of 64 are often used for these applications uh, to bring it down into the range that the controls can accept. Using an integrated encoder is going to be the easiest option if it is available because it's already part of the motor. An external encoder can also be used, and there are two choices for this method. First, you can get a slim or low profile encoder and you can fit it to the main shaft uh, with the blower wheel then fitted onto the main shaft after that, if, if you have the space for that. And this method would require that the shaft is long enough as well as the that the design will support and leave the clearance you need for the electrical connections. Lastly, a motor with a tail shaft could be used, and then the encoder can be fitted on the tail shaft directly. And here are some examples of encoders, and this particular brand is Encoder Products Company, showing a low profile encoder, uh, a general purpose in the center, and then the one on the right is a model that you would mount to the tail shaft of the motor. So the wiring. When with a NXF4000 or PPC4000, uh, the command to start the VFD is wired to the blower output relay. And if a PPC4000 is used, a line voltage relay must be connected to the fan output of the flame safeguard to switch the VFD on. Because with the PPC4000, it doesn't have the integrated flame safeguard. The blower command would be coming from the flame safeguard. So either relay is going to switch the VFD internal power supply to a digital input, which is assigned to start the VFD. If a bypass model is used, the start signal uses line voltage instead of the internal 24 volts DC of the VFD. The analog wiring is all connected to and from the P14 terminal block, and it can be done with a single three-conductor shielded cable. And it is also required to run to wire the run and the fault contacts of the VFD into the safety limit string uh, and of the NXF4000 or the flame safeguard so that there will be a lockout if the VFD doesn't start within the allotted time for the airflow switch to prove. And also it will lock out if there is a internal fault with the VFD. Most VFDs have at least two relays that are already assigned to those functions. And the logic for the fault contact normally is to wire to the normally closed pole and the relay is normally powered when there is no fault. And they do that so that there's a fault contact will be closed when the VFD is not powered at all. So here are some wiring connections shown for the digital wiring. Uh, we have the 
Uh, basically the start contact and the safety limits are shown here and which terminals they would go to. So I'll leave that up for a minute, but this is just some, some details of where they would wire. So with the analog connections, you can use a single three conductor shielded. And the reason for this is uh, that the analog input and output on the NXF 4000 and PPC 4000 have the same power supply or the same reference voltage. And all of the terminals uh, have continuity, all of the reference terminals have continuity at zero volts on the VFD terminal block from 14.7 to 14.12. So they're all electrically the same. Additionally, the analog inputs and outputs on the ACS 550 drive also have the same reference voltage. So any terminal marked A, G, and D would have common continuity as well. But if the drive that you use does not have a common analog reference, you'd simply connect the analog input common and analog output common together at the VFD, and they would be connected together at the NXF 4000 or PPC 4000 anyway if a four conductor cable were to be used, so you could still use the three conductor cable. So to the encoder, uh, the analog three conductor shielded is shown here. Basically every encoder is going to ha require a voltage in, a common, and then you're going to get a signal from the encoder. On the encoder it's going to be either labeled A or B, and they're just going to be slightly offset signals of the pulses, so either A or B can normally be connected to the input on the Nexus control. And these are generic terminal designations. Every encoder might call them something slightly different. On the NX6100 and PPC6000, it's going to work the same way. The command to start is going to be wired to the blower output relay. And if you have a PPC6000, it's going to go to the flame safeguard. Same as with the 4000. The analog wiring on the 6000 is going to be all connected to the PZ terminal block. And you're going to use the, a four conductor shielded cable with the PPC6000 or NX6100 instead of a three conductor. And you're going to run the run and fault contacts into the safety limit string the same way that you did with the 4000, but since the digital inputs for the 6000 are assigned to use for the safety limit input, it might be slightly differently uh, done than it is on the PPC 4000 or NXF 4000. So this same chart is shown here showing the terminal connection, so I'll leave this up just for a minute to, to let you read it. But here it's just going to have some detail about which terminals you're going to connect the start signal and the safety limits to the drive. So the analog is going to use a four conductor shielded in this case because the um, plus and the minus don't share continuity on the VFD card on the 6100 and the PPC 6000. The inputs and outputs are isolated. And so if you look at this, you'll note that for the second VFD, uh, PZ13 is used for both VFD1 feedback plus and VFD feedback minus for number two. And that's not an error, that's actually a design feature. So sometimes when you look at that wiring, it looks a little odd, but it shares one of the terminals for both uh, the plus and the minus for the two different VFDs. So unlike with the 4000 series, it is recommended that the shield wire is connected at both ends with the NX6100 and PPC6000 to provide additional noise immunity. So with the NX6100 and PPC6000, uh, special instructions must be followed when wiring analog signals. So some cables that we recommend using are listed here. So you should consider using these if possible. And you want to choose a cable that has at least as many conductors as you need or more. And any unused conductors should be taped off and secured. So here's the wiring method you would use. The cable shield must be grounded at each end. At the 6100 or PPC 6000, you strip back enough insulation to expose the braided shield and you insert it into the screen clamp as shown. So on the image on the right here, uh, where the cable goes into the control, you see that there is a clamp and some of the insulation is, is, is peeled back exposing the braid and the braid slides into that screen clamp to provide the shielding. On the VFD side, you're going to want to wrap the braid and shield wire into a single strand and cover with shrink tubing or insulating tape, and then make that connection to, in this case, it's called, labeled SCR on the terminal block on the right, the one at the very top, for screen. So 
So with an encoder, you're going to use uh, the same procedure as with the 4000, analog three conductor shielded or encoder wire lead. And it's going to have the same three connections, the, the plus voltage, the common, and the A or the B connection for the signal from the encoder. And again, it's generic uh, terminal names for the encoder. They're all going to be similar, but might be slightly different by brand. And another difference is you might need to use a, a 2.4K quarter watt pull-up resistor added between PZ8 and PZ7 uh, with the NX6100 or PPC6000 if the encoder does not have a built-in pull-up resistor. And we mentioned in the encoder selection that the pull-up resistor might be required with the 6000. So on our website, FireEye.com, we have many application wiring diagrams. In the service guide section of each Nexus control, we have many links to wiring diagrams as well as other helpful documents. We have full application wiring diagrams for the NXF4000 and PPC4000 right now in sections um, with, the, with the title uh, Wiring Application Guides. And for the NX6100 and PPC6000 versions of those diagrams are in the process. As well, if you search for ABB in the search bar, uh, that will display all of the ACS 550 documentation that we have with, from wiring diagrams to required parameter setups to operating manuals and everything. So here's an example. Or this is actually the wiring diagram that you can download from the website uh, for ACS 550 with non-bypass, showing the, con the terminal connections as well as the parameters. We also have one for the bypass model as well. And then the wiring application guides I was talking about, if you go to the NXF 4000 or PPC 4000 section and look under service guide, uh, we have the NXF 4000 wiring application guide or PPC 4000 wiring application guide. And it has uh, many different wiring diagrams for different generic applications. At the beginning, it has a, a label or a table of all the different wiring diagrams in the application guide and by feature. And in this case, I show a little bit of the table and I'm showing diagram three. And if you look at diagram three on the left, it'll show you what components are in that diagram. So with either of these controls, uh, you can switch between the profiles easily and you have four available profiles. And that's great because with four available profiles, it is possible to have a dual fuel burner with each burner capable of running in VFD bypass if required. So that means you can have a gas without bypass, a gas with bypass, oil without bypass, and oil with bypass. Additionally, this can be automated as the ACS 550 with bypass has a dry contact output to indicate when bypass is active. So this can be connected to a relay and added to the fuel changeover switching to choose from the four available profiles automatically instead of just two. The, profile, the bypass profiles are simply commissioned with the VFD channel disabled since the motor will be running at full speed across the line. So full diagrams for this action can be found in those wiring application guides that I just mentioned on our website. So the NXF 4000 and PPC 4000 have sev several parameters available when you configure a VFD for use. So the VFD channels themselves can be configured from the servo setup menu, and there's a menu for both VFD1 and VFD2. So to enable the VFD for use, first you have to select a name for the VFD, and that'll be a name such as fan, air, or something to describe what it's doing. Uh, and otherwise you would choose unused for the name if you're not using it. So after you choose a name, then you have to pick an assignment, and that's which profiles that the VFD is used with. If you were doing four profiles and only two of them were using a VFD, if it was either one and two or one and three, you would, for assignment you would pick one comma two or one comma three. Then for the display format, you have to choose between counts, encoder, or percent full speed. And if you choose counts or percent full speed, that's what you use with 4 to 20. Counts will just display the output as 0 to 1,000. So for example, uh, half speed or 30 hertz would be 500. Percent full speed is the same, except instead of five, saying 500, it would say 50%. And, or you can choose encoder, and if you choose encoder, it'll show also the feedback is 0 to 1,000 but then you're going to have to put in the encoder counts. And that was the number that we calculated earlier when we uh, picked the range from 300 to 5,000 in the case of the NXF 4000 or PPC 4000 based on the counts per revolution and the formula you put the number in for the encoder counts. Then you have to choose your run mode. And with this, you can choose between auto and manual. And the default is auto. 
So auto is what you want to use. This is where the NXF 4000 or PPC 4000 is going to control the PID function for the VFD. The VFD is programmed just to take a direct speed command. And again, this is the recommended run mode. But your other alternative is to choose manual. And in this case, the VFD will use its internal PID to calculate a speed based upon the input signal. And then the NXF 4000 or PPC 4000 will only issue the set point. This is not recommended as it may lead to lockouts from failure to reach those required positions. So it still maintains the proper uh, feedback requirements, but it's just less likely that the VFD is going to be able to carry out the, the commands. So then there's the gain, and this is the proportional gain for the internal PID for the VFD. And this can be set from 1% to 100%. And this only really needs to be adjusted if the VFD is reacting too fast or too slow for satisfactory operation. And the default for the setting is 1%. Then we have the integral, and this is the integral for the internal PID for the VFD. And this can be set from zero, which is disabled, up to 100 in 0 0.1 increments. And this only needs to be adjusted if the VFD is having trouble reaching the desired speed. So the default is zero. So next we have the tolerance, and this sets the allowable deviation from the target speed. This is based upon a normalized range of 0 to 1000 for the 0 to 60 hertz speed range. Falling outside of this tolerance range will result in a lockout. So you want to choose between low tolerance and high tolerance, and the default is high. So low tolerance, the positioning error must be less than 4%, which is 40 counts out of that 0 to 1000 counts over a period of 30 seconds. In high tolerance, the positioning error must be less than 6% or 60 counts over a period of 15 seconds. So only, you only want to choose the high tolerance setting if you know that it can result in safe combustion. Then we have acceleration or deceleration time, or and deceleration time. And this is the time that it takes to ramp from 0 hertz to full speed. And lengthening this time is normally one way to solve tolerance errors. The range here can be set from 0 to 255 seconds, and the default is 30. Uh, the last parameter here is the stop time. And this is the time that the NXF 4000 or PPC 4000 will wait between cycles before restarting. And this gives the motor time to come to a, to a full stop and as well as the airflow switch to change states. And this can be set from 0 to 100 seconds and the default for the stop time is 0 seconds. So note that if the VFD is set up and there is not a, a um, NXCES VFD card inserted in the chassis, there will be a lockout that the VFD is not present. The terminal block is still going to be present, even if the VFD card is not fitted, because the terminal block is part of the chassis, and it's not directly mounted to the card. So parameters with the NX6100 and PPC6000 are similar, but slightly different. The VFD channels can be configured by choosing the appropriate option from one of the drive serial number parameters, which is the option 3.x parameters. And this is where you would choose from uh, VSD 1 or 2 milliamp for 4 to 20 milliamp feedback, or VSD 1 or 2 with hertz for encoder feedback. And in order to have these options present for your drive serial numbers, the NXDB VSD card must be fitted into the control. Other options that you're going to set once you enable a VFD uh, are listed here, but note that these also apply to both VF VSD 1 and VSD 2 unless noted. And again, they also refer to VFD as VSD on the NX6100 and PPC6000, so it means the same thing. So the first is the inverter control accuracy, which is option 9.0. And here you're going to choose between 0 and 1, and the default is 0. And 0 is the same as uh, with the 4000 low accuracy setting. So the accuracy will be plus or minus 9 counts out of the full speed range of 1,000 counts, and this will equate to approximately... 0.54 hertz for a 60 hertz system. So you only want to choose this setting if it can result in safe combustion. And one is the high accuracy setting, and here the accuracy must be plus or minus three counts, which is 0.18 hertz for a 60 hertz system. Next is the inverter tolerance option, which is option 9.1, and here you can choose between zero and one with the default of zero. And Zero is the low tolerance setting, so the positioning error must be less than 30 counts for 15 seconds or 55 counts for 3 seconds, again based on 0 to 1000. And 1 is the high tolerance setting, and the positioning error here must be less than 55 counts for 3 seconds. If you choose the high tolerance setting, you want to make sure that it can result in safe combustion. Next is the inverter closed loop gain, which is option 9.2. 
So in this case, the NX6100 and PPC6000 always controls the PID function for the VFD. It doesn't have a manual choice. The VFD is programmed to take the direct speed command. And this can be set, this inverter a closed loop gain can be set from 15 to 125% with a default, a default of 100%. And as with the 4000, you only want to change this if it is going too fast or too slow. Next, we have the inverter stop time, option 9.3. And this is the time that the 6100 and 6000 will wait between cycles before restarting. Again, same as the 4000. This gives the motor time to come to a full stop and for the airflow switch to change states. And the range can be set from 0 to 100 seconds with the default of 0 seconds. We also have the inverter acceleration time, option 9.4. And this is the time it takes to ramp from 0 hertz to full speed. So lengthening this time is normally one way to solve tolerance errors, and the range can be set from 0 to 100 seconds with a default of 30 seconds. And the last two options are uh, separate for VSD 1 and 2 instead of global, and these are the speed encoder scaling, 9.5, and this is where you put the number calculated from the encoder scaling formula, just like the 4000, except that here we only have an allowable range from 255 to 999, and you would set it to 0 if you're using 4 to 20 milliamp feedback. So now we're getting towards the end and we have a little bit about troubleshooting if you do already have a VFD or if you're setting up a VFD. The first is no response with 4 to 20 milliamp feedback. So once commissioning mode is entered, the positions of the servos and the VFD are set as channels of combustion. The VFD isn't set until P1, which is the purge position. At the home position, the VFD will be off. Once the desired position is entered, the control will not allow progressing to the next position until the previous position has been reached. So if there is an issue with the wiring between the VFD and the control, or with the VFD configuration, this can lead to an inability to commission since either the command to the VFD or the feedback from the VFD is not being sent or received properly. So to confirm that there is an issue with the VFD wiring or configuration, all you have to do is jumper the 4 to 20 milliamp output to the 4 to 20 milliamp input on the VFD uh, terminal block on the control. So with the NXF 4000 or PPC 4000, this simply means jumping P14.1 to 14.3 since the analog signals internally share a common reference. So that single jumper will uh, jumper out the VFD. For the NX6100 and PPC 6000, you're going to jumper the analog outputs to the analog inputs, plus to minus. Uh, if the purge position can then be set properly with the jumpers in place, you want to start by checking the VFD configuration. If that's correct, then you want to connect only the output to the VFD and see if it actually runs at the proper speed. Finally, then you want to check that your feedback signal uh, matches that speed, and when you get them to be in alignment, you can reconnect. So putting in the jumper simply bypasses the VFD by, by showing you that the problem is, is external to the NXF 4000, PPC 4000, NX6100, or PPC 6000. So once the signals do match, the VFD should be able to be commissioned. So next is no encoder feedback. If there's no encoder feedback, first you want to make sure that all of the necessary wires are connected properly. The encoder needs a power source and a common connection to be able to create the pulsed output. If the connections are properly made and the encoder has multiple outputs, try connecting the other output. In this case, if A is connected, try connecting to B. Because A and B both create pulses at a slightly different time, so they both do create the required pulses so you can use either one. So you want to make sure all unused connections from the multi-wire cable of the encoder are secured and not touching anything. For example, you want to make sure that one isn't a little bit stripped and, and grounding out or something like that. If there is still no signal, a pull-up resistor may need to be added. And this only applies to the NX6100 and PPC6000 as the NXF4000 and PPC4000 have an internal pull-up resistor. So in that case, you want to connect a 2.4K quarter watt resistor between terminals PZ7 and PZ8. Finally, make sure the encoder is the correct type. An open collector output is required. If the encoder has a line driver output installed, uh, an external converter could be used in that case to convert the signal to the proper format. If you have incorrect coder feed encoder feedback, you want to check to see um, if the encoder scaling is correct for the model of encoder used. If it is close, the scaling number can be adjusted slightly if needed. And this has to do with that counts per revolution for the encoder. For the NX6100 and PPC6000, you want to run the VFD at full speed and check the value at engineer's key 69 or 70 
and add two to five percent to this value and then you can enter that in option 9.5 or 9.6 which is the scaling of the encoder then you want to follow up by checking that the feedback is linear at the various other positions if the encoder has too many pulses to work correctly with the control you can also get an external divider that can be used to convert the signal to a compatible number of pulses for the NX6100 and PPC6000, this will read as high in the red instead of as a value if your pulses are too high. So here's the conclusion. So to improve efficiency, uh, with the amount of electrical energy saving that is possible, a VFD should be added whenever you can. The additional channel of control is also useful for combustion setup as well. The ability to use four profiles allows bypass VFDs to be used with dual fuel applications, which can be a requirement for certain installations where they need that level of backup. With a full line of bypass and non-bypass VFDs for all 230, 460, and 600 volt applications and three-phase motors from 5 to 200 horsepower, FireEye is equipped to make using a VFD as easy as possible. With application guides, wiring diagrams, and technical support available, uh, to help you choose a VFD and Nexus control for your next application, FireEye can provide what you need. So if you have any questions on anything about the VFDs, please enter them in the chat. I'll leave this up for a few minutes to give you time to type them. And if not, I, I thank you all for participating today. And I will send out a link to the YouTube video version of this uh, presentation after the, the conclusion. Uh, so again, have a nice day and thanks for joining.